Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, and today's video is going to be a little bit different, a little bit more casual. So if you've been following the channel lately, you'll know over the summer I built my very first 009 layout, Gover Tin, and part of that series was to get the layout finished so that it could appear at a Model Railway exhibition at the Spa Valley Railway. Well, by the time you're watching this, the exhibition will have already been and gone, but for me, it's all still to happen. And since this will be my first time exhibiting a lab, I thought I'd bring you along on the journey. Now, I thought this might be useful for any of you out there who are considering exhibiting your own layout and just want to know what it's like. Or perhaps you have an exhibition booked already, but just want to know how to prepare. If so, I'll be sharing some of the things I learn along the way. And of course, I'm sure there are lots of you out there who are just interested to know what it's like behind the scenes too. So let's jump in and get started, shall we? So welcome back to Gopher Tin. As you can see, the layout is set up and right now I just want to take you through some of the things that I've done to prepare for the exhibition. The biggest thing is lighting. Obviously, I want to make sure people can see the layout and I don't want to rely on the lighting at the venue. So I've got hold of these gooseneck reading lamps, which I've clipped to the top of the suitcase and I can position them over the layout. They come as a pair and they work really well actually. Even in this bright room, they add some direct light to the layout. And of course I can dim them down and even change the color temperature as well. I honestly think these make a huge difference and I've put a link to these down in the description if you want to get some for your own layout. I think personally, I may actually get a few more of these to use on the modular layout too. The most important thing though is to keep trains running at all costs. So I wanted a way to be able to clean the loco wheels quickly and easily. As a result, I got hold of this Gauge Master wheel brush, which is really handy and you can see it just clips over a section of track. The power transfers up from the rails to the wire brushes and when you rest a loco down on these, the wheels turn and get cleaned by the bristles. I think this is going to be really handy for quickly cleaning a troublesome loco while at the show where I'm also contending with keeping the layout running and also talking to people. You can see I've just got a short section of track on a spare bit of wood for this and that's plugged into the programming output on my DCC controller. That leads me nicely into another major upgrade I've made which is that I've converted the layout over to DCC. Now, I built this capability into the layout when I originally built it, so all I had to do was plug some extra feeders onto the bus wires, and then of course put decoders in all the locos. For the double fairly, this was fairly simple, if you'll excuse the pun, since you just remove a panel on the bottom and plug a decoder in. Prince and the tram engine though needed hard wiring, which was a bit more tricky, especially the small England as there's really very limited space to fit the decoder in. Now the DCC system I use is the Z21, and it's very much overkill for a small simple layout like this, but it's just what I use with all my other layouts. That said, if there are any issues with running the layout on DCC, I do have a backup. I'm using my standard Gauge Master controller to power the lights and point motors on the layout, and this will also be standing by to run trains on analog if the DCC system stops working for any reason. And the way I've set it up, it'll just be a case of unplugging one controller and plugging the other one in. Additionally, since all my locos now have decoders in, I also got hold of a spare Kato chassis, which is what the tram engine runs on. Like I just said, the chassis in the tram now has a decoder hardwired to it, but if I do have to run on analog in an emergency, I can just pop the body off this chassis and clip it onto the spare one instead, and that way I still have a loco that can run. Of course, I'm not expecting there to be any problems, I'm just really coming up with backup plans in the hope that I don't have to use them. Speaking of backups, like I said, I'm using my Gauge Master controller to power all the points, but I've also got hold of a spare power supply as well, just in case this stops working too. Again, I'm not expecting it to stop working. It's a Gauge Master controller after all, which makes it bomb proof, but I do want to be prepared for every eventuality. Now, I also have a support box, which is what all the controllers and electronics for the layout will travel in, along with a couple of pat tested extension cables so I can plug everything in. I should only need one, but again, I've got two just in case I need extra power at the venue or one of them suddenly stops working for some reason. I'll also be taking a box of bits with stuff like screwdrivers and glue in there just in case I have to make any repairs on the fly. 
I've also packed the Dremel and soldering iron as well too. Again, I'm hoping I won't have to use these, but it's handy to have them just in case. Finally, all the stock for the layout will travel in this box file, which inside has a little foam tray with the cutouts for everything. Now this is really handy as it means I can transport all the locos and rolling stock without them getting damaged or without having to put them all back in their original boxes. I think I'll actually be using this to store all my 009 locos and rolling stock in permanently and again I put a link to this down in the description if you need a storage solution for your own 009 or I guess N-Gage locos too. So those are some of the ways I'm preparing ahead of the exhibition, but it doesn't end there because I've also made some improvements to the layout too. Starting off with something a lot of you have been bugging me about. All right, I get it, you can stop now. In all seriousness, I was always intending to add figures to Gopher Tin, I just didn't have the time to paint them up and put them on the layout for the final episode. However, we do now have some people around the station, starting off with this signalman who is just standing by the box, token in hand, presumably awaiting the next train movement. On the platform we then have a station master standing just underneath the shelter, keeping a general eye on things. That's probably for the best because further down the platform there's one of those pesky YouTubers about. Now if you think this figure looks a bit familiar, well this is actually me. Yes, earlier this year I was scanned by Model U, who actually made all of these figures. But yeah, they scanned me holding my phone out as a camera, and then they did a 3D print of that scan. Naturally, I placed myself in a strategic position on the platform so that I'm either taking a video of an approaching train, or whatever happens to be in the shed. And speaking of the shed, that's where my favourite little scene is taking place, where we have these two fitters working on one of the slate wagons. Now, this wagon had a little bit of an issue where one of the sets of wheels wasn't rotating properly, and so I decided rather than attempt to fix it, I'd turn it into a little cameo scene here with these two guys trying to make the repairs themselves. You can see the wheels are just beside the wagon, and I've given them a quick coat of brown paint just to rust them up a bit, and the wagon itself is being supported on two pieces of wood, which is actually just a cut down matchstick. I really like this scene, it just works so well for me, and it really gives this little area just in front of the shed a bit more of a purpose. I've done some more scenic work around this area too, you may notice a coal pile has appeared by the entrance to the shed, just using some of the crushed coal I had left over from the wagon loads I made ages ago. The surrounding area was also dirtied up using a Geoscenics track weathering kit too, they very kindly sent me some stuff for my double O gauge layout but I was so excited to use it I actually gave it a test here and I really like the results. It just breaks down this area a bit more and it makes it feel less pristine which I really like in comparison to the station. And speaking of the station, I did add some small patches of dirt and grime using the Geoscenics kit again, just where the engines tend to sit in the platform. I went over this with the oil solution too, which may not be quite right for steam locos, but again, I just really like how it looks. Like I said, this was all a bit of a test for an upcoming video on the modular layout, where I'll be going into more detail about how I use this stuff, so you'll get to see me using it in a much larger area very soon, hopefully. Finally, I've added some coaching stock to the layout, as you can see here. Up till now, I've mostly been running freight trains, but seeing as the layout has a station, I really needed to have at least one rake of coaches. So I built these two coach kits from Doondas, I think I'm saying that right, but they make loads of rolling stock kits for 009. They went together really nicely and actually I'm super pleased with how they've turned out. I do actually have a couple more of these kits to put together, so let me know if you'd like to see a tutorial on how to build one of these, as I did find the instructions a little bit confusing at points. So just to round out the rake, I also have a couple of the Pico four-wheeled coaches as well, which are both really nice in their red livery. I mean, it's quite obvious that these are proper ready-to-run coaches in comparison to my own kit build efforts, but I think this set of coaches works quite well, and I'm really looking forward to running these on the layout. So, that's all the improvements. I've tested everything to make sure it works, and now it's time to head over to the Spa Valley Railway to set the layout up for the exhibition. So here we are in the engine shed at the railway, and this is the space I had been given for the layout, right next to my friend Andy, who is a fellow guard at the railway, and he had brought two of his N-gauge layouts along. Yeah. 
getting the layout set up was pretty easy since we basically brought the suitcase in, opened it up and slotted the back scene in place. You may notice as well that I put some black cloth over the table, partly to improve the presentation, but also just to hide all the power cords and stuff I brought along with the layout. Incredibly, it actually started attracting a little bit of a crowd among some of the other volunteers who happened to be around, and this was before I'd even got any trains running. My main priority though was getting all of the electrics plugged in so that I could check everything still worked after the journey. And this may look like absolute chaos, but I promise I did have a plan here. At least I think I did. It's the glamour of modern railway exhibitions. <laughs> Eventually though, I finished setting everything up and we got some trains out on the layout, which then resulted in an impromptu photo shoot. Then it was time to head home, ready for the real work to begin in the morning. Okay, so it is early morning and I'm about to head down to Tunbridge Wells West for the first day of the exhibition. I'm a little bit excited, a little bit nervous as well. Uh, I don't really know what to expect, but I'm generally just hoping that people enjoy watching the layout. And uh, if last night was anything to go by, it was attracting a little bit of attention among some of the other people who were setting up their own layouts. So um, that was a good sign, I think. Um, but yeah, hopefully uh, the layout will run properly. I think that's my main thing is as long as we can keep a train running around the circuit pretty much constantly, I'll be happy. Um, and yeah, I think we're in a really good position as well. We're fairly close to the door. So, uh, and I think you also sort of have to kind of walk past Gopher Tin to kind of get to the main part of the exhibition as well. That's sort of further down the shed. So um, yeah, I think we're in a really good position. Uh, I think it's gonna be a really fun and interesting day. Uh, let's go do it. Upon arriving back at the exhibition, things had very much changed and the engine shed was looking a lot more busy. For me though, the first job of the day was getting the two flexible lamps in position to light up the layout. But yeah, looking down the engine shed, you can see several more layouts and retailers had arrived and presumably set up early that morning. Meanwhile, I was back crawling underneath the table again, getting everything plugged in and turned on. everything ready to go, it was time to get a train running and the little Toby lookalike tram got the honours. Let's see if you can spot my slight error coming up here. Oh, it only helps if I put the points the right way around. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, truly a testament to the Kato chassis there. Then before we knew it, the show had opened and the public were in, and from pretty much this point onwards, there was constantly people watching the layout and asking questions.
And of course, there were loads of you lovely people who watched the channel and came to see Gopher Tin in person too. And I may have taken pictures with some of you. But seriously, thank you so much to everyone who stopped by to say hello, and I do hope you enjoyed the show. Okay, so the first day of the show is over. Uh, it's been a very long day. I'm back home now, and I'm just doing some work on the tram engine because the sound decoder that I had in this failed halfway through the day. Um, don't know why. Um, it stopped running in both directions. In one direction, it wouldn't make any sound at all, and in the other direction, even though it was stationary, uh, it would just start chuffing at the fastest rate possible. So clearly something has gone wrong with the decoder in that. Did try resetting it, that didn't make any difference. Um, so yeah, I suspect there's a bigger problem with that. Not looking forward to having to solving that, but it's not really something I can deal with right now, especially in the middle of the show. So what I've done is I have taken the decoder, that's the sound decoder that was in it, um, I've taken that out of the loco. And uh, thankfully I had a spare eight pin decoder hanging around, not a sound decoder, just a, a normal bog standard eight pin decoder. So I've sliced the little uh, pins, that's the little sort of pin thing that you get on the end of the decoders. I've sliced that off so I can hardwire it onto the Kato chassis. So there you go, that's the, the Kato chassis there that is, normally sits inside the tram engine and that's the decoder I've just added on top there. So I've hardwired that on. Um, I've done a very messy job of putting some Captain tape around all the solder joints just to make sure it doesn't short anything out. But um, now all I need to do is just uh, put, pop this back inside here and there you go, clips inside. And uh, that is now ready for day two of the show. So um, yeah, I wanted to make sure I could get this running again because um, it's a really good little runner when it works. So um, yeah, don't know what's wrong with that sound decoder, but um, this will now work at least. I have tested that as well um, with the body off. So um, yeah, so like I said, uh, doing it all again tomorrow. Hopefully I'll remember to film a little bit of video before I set off tomorrow morning, uh, which hopefully if I do remember to do that, you will see that now. Okay, day two of the exhibition. Gonna try and film more today uh, because I didn't film really anything at all yesterday. Um, but yeah, day two of the exhibition. Excited again. Voice a little bit scratchy from talking to all of you lovely people so much over the course of the day. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to it. Got my Gova Tin t-shirt on today and uh, oh, you can just see in the background that's the modular railway. Um, so yeah, if anyone's interested in what the modular railway looks like when it's not in use, that's pretty much it. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, time to go. Let's uh, Get cracking on day two of the Spa Valley Railway Exhibition. Despite my optimism in that bit of video there, I once again completely forgot to film anything, although I did just about remember to get some shots of the layout running for my exhibition overview video. Again, more of you guys stop by to check out the layout, including this absolute legend who has an impeccable dress sense. <clears throat> These t-shirts are currently available in my store. Just click the link in the description if you would like to also be a legend. Okay, shameless self-promotion over. But yes, generally another very busy day at the exhibition. And he's getting some shots into the layout. <laughs> oh, no, you're all right. You're, you're more than happy. You're more than happy. Really? If, yeah, this is this is Richard, our uh, manager. Are you exhibition manager? Is that exhibition your exhibition manager? Yeah. Is that your official title? Yeah, official title. Yeah. And then this is this is Al. He's my carer. <laughs> <laughs> he's, the, he's the one keeping me sane for the there entire we weekend yeah. while, uh, yeah. while I... I've done the talking, while, he's while done I, the yeah. walking. While I ran all this. Yeah. That's so, it? Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's been a fantastic weekend, it's, hasn't it's, it? It's, it's that model well. Where? It's that one. Well. Um, he done that. It, this has been a fantastic weekend, hasn't it? Uh, have you, have you been, enjoyed yourself? Mate, I I'm genuinely... I'm trying to get you in the shot right, and you keep sorry, standing sorry. behind me. Right, so the, the truth of the matter is I turned up here on Saturday at what, uh, about 10 past uh, 10. Something and like that, yeah. I thought, I looked at my watch at half 10 and I thought, that was a long hour. Um, but actually the rest of the weekend has been tremendous. <laughs> it's been good fun, It's been really it? good, yeah. I've thoroughly enjoyed and it. I've actually just, got a bit of a bite just, of the bug. Yeah, and we've just had this engine literally running around all day. 
it's been an absolute workhorse is what we've been saying. Yeah. It's just it's not stopped since like 10 a.m. every morning, just keep going around. Occasionally we'll run something else and then we'll come back to this because yeah. it's just been so good. It's been brilliant. And so, yeah. it's, Joe, it's been such a great learning curve for me. I, I, I'm the Luddite. I turned up not knowing anything, never doing any of the, no, never ever doing any of these things before. Um, and I've left going, oh, I've made trains. <laughs> That's fantastic. We've got, we've, we've got another one. Uh, this is Andy as well. Andy's a fellow guard at the Scarlet uh, Railway. You've had your two airs as well, which that's River Lane, and then beyond it is Beachlands, which um, they were in... They were, Beachlands was here last year, wasn't Beachlands it? Beachlands was here last year, And then year, River Lane yeah. is the one you've brought. River Lane's is, is come along the, since. The so. one you've built this year, so yeah. yeah so we'll it's been great that. to be next to you guys. Obviously, we had Benjamin here yesterday. Yeah, we, yeah, had, we had, time. had a great time. We had him yeah. running the layout. Of the go, we had him running Go for Tid at some point as well. Yeah, so loved it. Loved it. Fantastic. Yeah, it allowed fantastic. me to have a bit of a break as well. So yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, thank you to Benjamin if you're watching that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, let's do it all again next year. Yeah, next year. Yeah. Let's bring it on. But we'll, we'll have, <laughs> have to build something else now to bring next year. Yeah. Hmm, let's get thinking about that. Just disappearing off there in the distance. That's the first time I've seen one of the big trains all weekend. Which is packing up now. And then um, that's the big train. And then um, that's the little train in there. So you can see the suitcases. Yeah, this is the railway's trolley, not ours. Um, and then, yeah, everything's just packed on top. So that's the suitcase. Little box file with a bit of foam in that's um, got all the locos and wagons in. Just some black cloth. And then in here in the canvas bag, we've just got some extension leads, the uh, control box and the lights. So yeah. just need to get all this in the car now and then make the, uh, make the drive home. So it's been a few days since the exhibition now and I've just about recovered. Um, I did lose my voice a bit actually since I spent pretty much the entire weekend just talking to people about the layout. But yeah, it was really busy all weekend and I thought that because it was at the railway uh, it would get a bit quieter every time a train left the station. But honestly we were just talking to people constantly and I do want to say a really big thank you to everyone who stopped by to say hello. Um, as a result, we didn't have the time to try and do anything complicated, we just left a train running around the main circuit like this all the time, and honestly, that was all most people wanted to see. I would say that if you're planning on taking the layout to an exhibition, seriously, don't worry about having a big complicated operating sequence, just make sure you have a train running around at all times because that's what most people just want to see, myself included when I go to exhibitions as well. So yeah, we kept it simple and I think that worked really well, especially for my own and the layout's first exhibition. Um, like I said in one of those last bits of video, this green double fairly that's running around now was really the star of the show. Um, we just ran it all weekend because it was so consistent. Um, the slate wagons were also really good too. Uh, the coaches that are just going into the tunnel now, we did have a minor issue with the couplings on those, so we didn't run those as much, but as you can see now, that's all been sorted. They'll come out of the tunnel in a minute. And um, I've actually got a few more of those kits to put together, which I'm really looking forward to. Finally, I've also got my very first plaque for the layout as well to show that Gopher Tin did attend the Spa Valley Railway Exhibition in 2022. So naturally that has taken pride of place in the lid of the suitcase where everyone can see it. Will I be adding any more exhibitions to that list? Well, I don't know. I definitely enjoyed myself and I would love to do more in the future, but it is a lot of work and so I don't think I'd be able to do it all that often. I think generally I won't be seeking out exhibitions, but if someone gets in contact with me and wants the layout to attend their show, I'll definitely consider it and actually I've had a few invitations to other shows already, so I suspect Go For Tin will make more appearances in the future. So, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you've ever wondered what it's like taking a layout to a show, well, hopefully this has answered some of your questions. Although, bear in mind that it will of course be different for every layout and every exhibition. That's gonna be it for today though, so thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.